All right, let's go ahead and get started with tonight's council meeting. This is March the 28th. This is an official meeting of the Livingston Parish Council. Uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Thursday, all notices have been sent out. So um, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy life and to get here tonight. And let's try to run through this council meetings. First thing, um, as we normally do, we always start off with a prayer. Tonight, Mr. John Mankus is in charge of uh, getting the invitation. I believe he has uh, someone. Um, yeah, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Avery Johnson. Um, if you can come up, Mr. Avery Johnson. And we'll turn it over to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, who has given us all things, we call into mind your scripture that says that all authority and power are given unto you and unto those that whom you invested in. We ask that as these who are gathered here, who have been given the gift of governance and the responsibility of the care for those in this parish, we ask, O Lord, for your peace to descend upon this meeting. We ask that the council be given your wisdom by the Holy Spirit, and we ask that the people that they serve remember that they too are servants in need of grace in times of difficult decisions that have to be made. We ask for your power over our parish, a protection of angels that are around us, and that you continue to guide our people who live here, regardless of where they come from, into a place of peace, harmony, and understanding, that we may grow as a parish and as a people. And for all that we ask and all that we pray, we are careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In the name of of you, in your mighty matchless name, amen. Amen. <coughs> Mr. Wally Avera, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? It is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all so much. Um, Ms. Sandy, you want to call the roll and make sure we have a quorum for tonight? Mr. Wascom? Here. Mr. Mangus? Here. Mr. White? Here. Mr. Coates? Here. Mr. Shavers? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Ms. Sandifer? Here. Mr. Erdy? Here. Mr. Goff? Here. All right, might want to just a quick friendly reminder, check your cell phones just so we don't have a whole bunch of interruptions tonight. Um, again, we will, as always, if, if there is a specific item that you want to speak on, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and try to keep your comments to a couple minutes so we, because it might wind up going on tonight. And if someone does say something, try not to repeat something that's already been said. And so let's, so we can, for the sake of moving forward, uh, the very first item should be a real quick one. Uh, to adopt the minutes for the 14th, 2024 meeting, is is there a motion to adopt the meet, minutes from October, from uh, March the 14th? I move. move by, motion by Mr. Mangus. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Taylor. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Uh, that motion carries unanimous. Uh, let's jump down to item 21. We're going to dive straight into this. I'd ask this to be put on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Taylor, Jeff Taylor had reached out to me, and and I'll give a quick synopsis. Uh, in 2023, Louisiana legislative session, uh, they passed a, a, a law, a bill, that allowed for homestead exemption to be raised from $75,000 to $100,000 if you are a first responder. The state passed that law. Part of that law said that you have to be a first responder. There's a criteria that has to be met for firefighters or policemen. Uh, uh, there's a list of, of, of qualified personnel that can meet that. But to obtain that, it also has to be approved by the parish council. So if the parish council doesn't do it, then that savings cannot be passed on to first responders. Um, and so basically what we need from Mr. Jeff Taylor's office was some marching orders to give them the authority to, to, to provide homestead exemption raised from 75000 to 100000 for first responders. 
Um, you want to say anything on this, Jeff, or do you, or, or, or do you want to just us move forward? I can take it if you want. Uh, you got to uh, see who is going to qualify for it, and it's all spelled out who gets it. But you would be the one making that. You, they would have to apply to you, correct? They got to apply to me. I've got to uh, make a form up for who, when they come in. So we got to get it passed through legal and everything to make sure that our form is correct. Uh, but the the nine of you have to make that decision on whether you've got three things that you can do. You can vote to give it to them, you can vote not to give it to them, or you can take no action and it just goes away. But I've got to know something as soon as possible because I've got to get the forms and we got to pass it through legal. But it does raise it to uh, 100,000 for first responders now. Now they'll have to make yearly applications yearly with you. Yearly application, yes. And then it'll be on you to determine that they meet all the criteria for first responders. That's correct. Okay. Um, and just a point of uh, um, order on this, um, that it actually was passed by the people statewide as a constitutional amendment in November of 2023. Right. So it's statewide. It's, it's not just a vote of the people in Livingston Parish. That's correct. Or an act revised statute of legislation. But if we stop, if we don't allow it, then that, that benefit right. doesn't go to our first responders. Right. And, so. and I think it's, a, it's, isn't it capped? Correct me if I'm wrong. They could only save up to 2,500 or, or whatever. It's 25,000, but in assessment uh, yeah. properties and everything, everything's at 10%, 10%. so it'd be 2,500. Yes. Okay. This is the people we want. Is, is there a motion? I'm, I make a motion that we approve the um, amendment to give the uh, raise the homestead exemption for first responders to a hundred thousand. I'll second that. Like, so there's a motion to uh, do that. Uh, I personally would like to see it and authorize make it to Mr. Taylor to m offer the maximum amount of savings possible you can find under the law. To allow that to happen for our first responders, you know, I guess you know if there's a if there's a question in the future about whether it was or not, uh, if they don't meet the criteria of a first responder, you know, I mean, I'm just saying. And the reason I say that is because I personally think homestead exemption. I'm speaking for myself. Should be raised for everyone in the parish, and I believe that, and I'll support that. But this. Is not doesn't go near about far enough as far as I'm concerned, but it is a small step in the right direction for people to protect their homes when they live and reside in their house in Livingston Parish. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? Uh, Ms. Sandy, you want to call for the vote? Mr. Wasson? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Shaver? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Sanders? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. I motion carried. Mm -hmm. Mr. Taylor, thank you so much. I pray everything goes well with you for the rest of your evening. Is, is there anything else you need from us, or is that? No, that's that suffice. Okay. Thank you all so much. Let's go back to um, addendum. Let, let's pick up addendum A2, which is, is Mr. Ryan here? <clears throat> I don't see him. Let's, uh, is he, he said he was coming tonight, so let's. Let's hold off on the two addendums, and if Jim does show up tonight, Sandy, we can uh, we'll, we'll pull those back up. Uh, 8A, a recognition of Brielle Knox. Is that am I saying that correctly? Uh, who represents Livingston Parish as the princess at Mardi Gras in Denham Springs? Uh, Miss Knox Denton. Randy, did you put this on the agenda as well? Is this Jerry's daughter? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, ju I just put that together. Congratulations. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, bring me great honor to introduce to y'all Ellen Dent. She's the daughter of Judge Jerry Denton and Michelle Denton. <coughs> and you can see where she gets her looks, and it ain't Jerry. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry is smart now. Having said that, she's from Denton Springs, Louisiana. She currently attends Louisiana State University as a junior. 
She's pursuing a degree in kinesiology, okay, <laughs> with a concentration in human movement science. Post graduation, she plans to further her education by applying to graduate school to become a physician assistant. While her professional background primarily lies in healthcare, she also harbors a strong interest in government and legislative affairs after watching her councilman John Wascom. <laughs> Presently, she serves as student medical assistant at the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic under Dr. Green, who's our public service commissioner. Additionally, she actively participates in the Delta Gamma Sorority and the Physician Assistant College Society at LSU. This year, Ella has the honor of being sponsored by Senator Bill Cassidy as a Washington, D.C. Mardi Gras princess, alongside other young women representing Louisiana, marking its 75th anniversary. This esteemed organization brings the spirit of Mardi Gras to the nation's capital with pomp, reverie, and tradition. Senator John Kennedy presided over the 75th Washington Mardi Gras festivals with New Orleans Saints quarterback and Super Bowl MVP Drew Brees, serving as the king of the 2024 Mystic Crew of Louisiana. She has a lot of other stuff here, but it's not about her, so I'm not going to read it, okay? <laughs> what i like to do is present a certificate of award of recognition to Ella, but i like the council to come down and take a picture with her, being, especially being she's so interested in government. You better put that in her first office at the White House. <laughs> you want to come down? <laughs> And we're going to put y'all in the middle. You and your wife. As y'all. I got it on my phone. Take it back. Take it back. hands with. A box. One be. Ricky, come on. You see that shaking? That's not her nerve. <laughs> <laughs> not her nerve. Thank you. Before we go to uh, the next item on the agenda, Mr. Ryan showed up. So let's go ahead and pick up addendum A2. Uh, this is a, a notice of intent to call an election. Notice is hereby given in accordance with section 19-1 of the title 42. The Louisiana revised statute 1950 is amended by the parish council acting as the governing authority of the Livingston Parish, state of Louisiana. At a regular scheduled meeting on April the 11th at its regular meeting place. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. It's April 25th. I know your. I know your. I know yours says April the 11th. It's April 25th. Let's read this for me. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, at its rightly scheduled meeting on April 25th, 2024, at its regular regular meeting place, Council Chambers in the Governmental Building, 2355, 20, 20355 Government Boulevard, Livingston, Louisiana. At 6 p.m., we'll discuss and consider adopting a resolution ordering and calling an election 
to renew and rededicate the levy and collection of a special ad valorem tax of 2.5 mils. All right, and there will be no action taken tonight on that, but there is another intent of an election also, correct? Yes, sir. There's no motion, no second, no discussion, no action. Uh, just a public notice again. Notice is hereby given an introduction. No, blah, 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 blah. Notice is hereby given in accordance with Section 19.1 of Title 42 of the Louisiana Revised Statute of 1950 as amended that the Parish Council, acting as the governing authority of the Parish of Livingston, State of Louisiana, the Parish, at its regularly scheduled meeting on April 25, 2024, at its regular meeting place, Council Chambers, in the Governmental Building, 20355 Government Boulevard, Livingston, Louisiana, at 6 p.m., will discuss and consider adopting a resolution ordering and calling an election to rededicate the one-fourth of the existing and future revenues received from the one-cent sales and use tax. Mr. Ryan, that's all we required to do, if I'm not mistaken. That is it. Happy one, Easter, everybody. I have one question, man. Um, after sitting down with the, Mr. Mickey with the finance part, I know, he, he's like, not again. Uh, and after having some discussion with the parish president, Mr. Randy DeLatte, and looking at what the health unit actually cost us a year to run, uh, we would like to ask if it's possible to move it from 2.5 to 2.0. I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm not going to have any public discussion. This okay. Meeting. All right. I just knew it was worded in here, and I didn't know if that needed to be clarified now or later. I, I would speak twice of advice of your council i think we do not want to have any discussion for at this okay. meeting we'll do it at the uh, 24. thank you happy easter everybody thank you if you would just gotcha. if you want to bring my keys back in when you're done thank you jim uh item b mr joey dominic with florida paris juvenile detention center uh mr mangus has uh, asked for uh for him to give us a quick presentation uh if you would give us your I know you were going to be here. Thank you very much for coming here. And um, please tell us the service that you perform for our um, residents of Livingston Parish. Sure. Thank you for having me. Council, my name is Joseph Dominic. I go by Joey. I'm the executive director for the Florida Parish's Juvenile Justice District. We operate the largest juvenile detention center in the state of Louisiana. And that Detention Center is located in Tansbo Parish, but it also serves Livingston Parish. Uh, it serves St. Helena Parish, Livingston, Tansbo, Washington, and St. Tammany. And um, next month on the 27th, we're going to have a renewal of the tax millage that funds this detention center. Uh, but before I get into that, just want to give you a brief overview of what we're about if you're not familiar with us. Um, in 2020, we took in about 400 kids. In 2023, we took over 700 kids in. Uh, so I don't care what anybody says, there is a violent crime uptick and a juvenile crime uptick in this region of the state. Well, really all across the country. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, and I'm not going to get into them, but that's the reality that we deal with. I didn't just come here tonight to spell out doom and gloom, of course. I wanted to share with you about the good work that the detention center does. We're not the detention center that you see on the news where kids are escaping or assaulting staff members. I like to call us the flagship juvenile detention center of the state. Um, and I say that because we're nationally recognized and awarded. Um, in 2016, 20, and 23, we won awards nationally for improving the conditions of confinement for kids. What kind of kids am I talking about? Well, we take in kids for everything that an adult could get arrested for. Armed robbery, murder, aggravated rape. Uh, and then we take in kids that are just troubled and have problems and probably need a place to be placed until the court can figure out what's, what's going on with them or triaging them. But primarily the purpose of the detention center is pretrial detainment. We are the only detention center in the region to house kids. Um, there's no other place for kids to go when they get crossways with the law. Kids cannot go to adult jails or adult lockups. They have to go to juvenile detention centers. And not just a practitioner's point of view, but just a realist point of view, we're very lucky to have this detention center in our area. There are 
there are parishes all across our state that don't have juvenile detention centers. And when law enforcement detain a youth, uh, they're often finding themselves having to place that kid out of state. And the parish incurs the cost of that, which is exponential. Um, the price of this detention center, I think, is a bargain for what you get. The average homeowner, it costs them about $16 a year on their tax bill. We're probably the lowest number on that tax bill. Uh, the detention center just made its 30th birthday back in January. So that millage has been renewed every, every 10 years since then. Um, that's, that's really all I have to share. I want to empower you to help educate your constituency <laughs> about this vote and about the necessity of the vote and passing this millage. Um, if this millage didn't pass within a year, year and a half, the detention would have to c shut its doors. And then we would go to what it was like before 1992 when it was built, where kids would be issued a summons, and then the court would cross their fingers that they show up. Uh, to answer for the charge. And in today's modern society, we would think that that's just unrealistic, but that's the reality. That's what would happen um, because we'd be much like other places in the state that don't have a juvenile detention center. And when is this election? It's April 27th. Okay. Um, I, I believe early voting will obviously be probably okay. a week before then. I believe Mr. Mangus had a question. Is that? I, I just want to say in, in my occupation, when I don't, I don't do this, I, I do. Uh, homebound education for Livingston Parish School Board, and I have taught students that have been through your program, and it, it's a blessing to have your facility. Uh, so this is not a new tax in any way, shape, or form. It's just a renewal of the existing one. Uh, nobody's tax rates will go up. Uh, so I would like to... Um, when Mr. Dominic finishes, I would like to make a resolution um, that, uh, do we need to read it? Or? To support the yeah, renewal there, of the tax? There's a resolution here. You want me to? You can, if you can shorten it, it it's fine. Is there any way to shorten it or you want me to read the whole thing? What is it? Your pleasure, sir. <laughs> a resolution to support the renewal of the tax renewal? Yes, a resolution to support the renewal. Um, of the tax for the Livingston Parish, another the Florida Parish's juvenile detention center. Motion by Mr. Mangus. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Joe Hurd. Is there any more discussion? Uh, Ms. Sand, you want to call for the vote? Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't have to read. Item, let's go to item 10, Livingston Parish Grants Adopt a Resolution Proclaiming. What's that? Yeah. Um, let's go to... Uh, before we jump down, let's go ahead and take up uh, item eight, Echo E, Miss Linda Gardner. Uh, Mr. Ryan Shavers asked Miss Linda to come speak. Uh, is she here? Real quick, I'd like to let everyone know, we, for everyone here tonight and for everyone watching on television, we're going to play a video. <laughs> I know. And you're going to see it at your house on TV. And I assure you, we will not start this meeting until that video comes back, until it comes back to this council. So, Miss Linda, you've got a bunch of people waiting on it. Roll the video. Tommy? Welcome to Livingston Parish. I'm Lane Hardy asking you to keep Livingston Parish clean and litter free.
We are trying to get a lot of people in our parish to volunteer to pick up some of this litter that's all over our waterways and our roads. Lipson Parish is beautiful. It's second to no other place in the world. The Sheriff's Office has been a member of the Keeping Livingston Beautiful organization since its inception. Just such an important group because taking priority of, of picking up trash and, and making sure that the beautiful state of Louisiana that we live in remains beautiful. Everyone should do their part, and but it's not just picking up. It, it's about education. It's about not literally not being there in the first place. Because there's no better way to welcome family and visitors to your home than to have a neat and clean area. Awesome day. We had to cancel once and then, you know, we thought it was going to rain again, but it turned out to be a beautiful day on a beautiful river in Livingston Parish. And it was wonderful. I think that's going to help get the knowledge out to our younger folks like Lane's group about, you know, being litter free and taking care of our environment. I think for that. All right. Well, I believe you're going to do a quick, uh, a, a very quick PowerPoint. Yes. <clears throat> Ready, go. So we're going to talk a little bit of trash tonight. Is that all right with everybody? All right. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about the program, the Litter Abatement Department um, for the for Livingston Parish. I'm going to talk to you about our, some of our action plans that we will be doing going forward. First of all, we're going to talk about engagement, environment, education, and enforcement, and also prevention effects. Power of engagement. I'm just going to name them. I'm not going to um, talk, talk about them. Community cleanup days, neighborhood cleanup days, library card program, get down and clean up. You can look um, in your library about that program. It's a great program. Port appointed litter abatement, community service, keep Louisiana beautiful, love the boot program that they have every year. Keep America beautiful, great American cleanup in November. Clean biz partnerships, that's with local businesses that want to come on and and participate. Um, I, I'd like to address the Livingston Parish Council Districts this, tonight and ask them to, again, um, come on board with us, with Livingston Parish government and keep Livingston Parish beautiful, to go over with, go with your districts that you're in. And I'll give you an example. Uh, Mr. Joe Erty gave me a call several weeks ago. Um, he was concerned, and the, a lot of the citizens in the area were concerned with the Haines Settlement. If you're not sure about Haines Settlement, I want you to know that that is a historical area. That is one of the first black areas, settlements in, in Livingston Parish. And it's historical and it's beautiful. It's about, almost about four miles. So we wanted to get it cleaned up. So I made, a, I made a phone call. We got our detention center out there. They spent a whole day out there and cleaned it up. And it's really, really nice. So last night at the, at the Albany Town Hall meeting, one of the la a lady came up afterwards and she said, "So are you the one that helped with Haines Settlement?" I said, "Well, you know, I helped assist, but you know, I'm not I'm not the brainstorm of that program." But I will tell you that she's she's been a, she's a bus driver for Livingston Parish Public Schools, and she said every morning on her route for the last three weeks, she has seen the community people out picking up the trash. You clean something up. You clean something up. And they're going to take the pride in it. So we go and we talk to the pastors, we talk to the preachers in those communities, and we say, we've come out here and we've cleaned your properties up. We've cleaned your beautiful community, historical district up. So what can you do to help us as the parish to come on board? So what I'm, at, what I'm asking each of you, council men and women, that you take hold of your district and we can plan a dump day for your district. Or you plan it, we bring out the dumpster. You you get somebody like Mr. Ryan, wish we had one of you everywhere, Ryan, in your communities to, to help clean up the communities because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take more than parish government. It's going to take more than parish council. It's going to take education. But if we're out there with boots on the ground, 
we're going to show them how much we care and how much passion we have about this parish to keep it clean and beautiful. Municipalities and communities will work very closely with all of them um, and we'll work very closely with you. Civic organizations and nonprofit organizations, you know, those, those are some of the best organizations to reach out to. You know, you're sad at, your, uh, at the schools, at the high school, the different clubs. Those are the ones that we could target, those teenagers, those younger kids, to get them involved and, and give them the power to engage in their community. Environment, litter-free pitch-in. So we're going to be working on the Dr. Road program, bringing that back, have that back in our parish. We have court-appointed litter abatement community service hours for people that, you know, have had an offense with a, a DUI. They have to give, you know, so many hours. This is about 32 to 36 hours of community service. We are going to have our first ever, you'll have a flyer, um, Livingston Parish cleanup day, dump day. I've had a lot of people on Facebook ask us about hazardous waste, paint, different things like that. So we will plan for the fall to do some type of a hazardous waste cleanup for the fall because we do have our citizens in this parish asking for those things. And there's a lot of good comments on our social media about this dump day. They're really excited about it. They're calling, they're texting, they're emailing me. I probably had five emails today that I answered. And then at the end of it, when I send it, I send it right back, and they send me right back, thank you. Thank you for responding. We're not going to put something out there to our citizens and not make an effort to reach out to them and to answer their questions, because there wouldn't be no reason for the, us to do that. Our, we have educational resources. I'm just going to show you our, really quick. You have a little, you have some, a book up there. It's called Litter Free Louisiana. And this is called this Environmental Lessons. This just came out. And in the fall of this year, I will be going in to some of the, the school's fourth grade and teaching them these environmental classes at one hour class each day. And that's, that's where it all starts, too, is in the classroom. So our other resources are, of course, Keep Livingston Parish Beautiful, our Livingston Parish Public Schools, Environmental Education Resources, our local libraries, DEQ, and Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. They just gave me a call yesterday. They told me um, that they're over living spares. There's two deputies. Um, Corporal A. Bears, one of them. And he said, Miss Linda, he said, I gave out 12 litter tickets last week. And I was like, hallelujah. Thank you. So that's great to know that we have such great partnership. You know, with fish and wildlife. <clears throat> you know, we're also going to be, to be announced, we're going to start a litter court for our parish through our, you know, our constables and, um, and then the next one be, you know, the enforcement part. You know, we, there are state litter laws, there's parish laws, ordinances. Um, there's a new reporting number for um, litter and it's 1-855-LA-LITTER. Any questions? Ms. Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, is there any comments from the council? Mr. Hardy? Yes, I just want to say that uh, Ms. Linda cooperated above and beyond what I even asked for. And, and their job when they were finished was remarkable. It was like just like a light switch that day and night. But they did a wonderful job. Everybody here should ask her because she's good. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ms. You. Linda. And I just want to add that thank you, Ryan and Miss Linda. Um, District 6 is going to have a cleanup day, too. Um, we're participating. Uh, that'll be April 20th. So um, thank you, and I'll get you more details. It'll be on Facebook and all that. So, um, And I believe you're coordinating with the City of Dunn Springs and Donna Jennings for, for that? Yes, they're doing a beautification project for downtown Main Street. Okay, so we'll, we'll be doing that too. Okay, that'll be the whole week, I believe. She it's, said. Yeah, it's actually a two-week program this time, and we've we've got almost every municipality involved some way or another. Well, that's fantastic. Thank okay. you so much. I also want to mention too that Lieutenant Governor is a big part of keeping our our parish beautiful and keeping our our beautiful state of Louisiana beautiful. He has he, he's gone every day promoting the parish, promoting the state of Louisiana. 
he has he had came to um to us and talked a little bit about starting a uh, starting a program for the litter abatement program through the parish there's only only two other parishes that have a litter abatement director Tanj Maho is one and I'm the other and that's it of 64 parishes I've been working with Tanj Maho and she's been mentoring me because she's done such a successful job over the last 10 years so Mr. Um, Lieutenant Governor also has a grant for $80,000 if you do not have a litter abatement program out in your your um, your parish that he has, you know, told us that he's going to help us to get that to get that grant to help us to move forward and to do great things for this parish. And I'm looking forward to uh, meeting each one of you and getting to know you. And, and anything I can do, everybody has my cell number. 24 hours a day. Just give me a call. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. Lynn. Item 10A is adopt a resolution proclaiming April 21th. April 2024 as Fair Housing Month of Livingston. Is there a resolution you have someone to read this, uh, Brandy, or, or, or if you don't, then we'll just, Miss Heather? Your packet, I sent that over to Miss Sandy, but uh, I'm Heather Crane, the grants manager for Livingston Parish. Um, we do this every year because we accept money from HUD, and it's just to satisfy their programmatic rules. Um, but you should have the proclamation in there. So this is you approving the resolution, and then Mr. Randy will sign the proclamation. All right. Is there a motion to approve the resolution, the proclamation? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Taylor. Second. Second by Ms. Sanford. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the parish president to execute the contract between Livingston Parish Council and Triumph Construction LLC, the responsible low bidder for uh, the City of Walker Sewer Medication Project, and to authorize the parish president to reactively execute the cooperative endeavor agreement. I spoke with the mayor of Walker, and he was excited that we're making this happen. So you just need a resolution authorizing the parish president to move forward with this grant, correct? A contract with the low bidder and to execute the CEA. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Ricky Goff. Second South by second. Mr. Lonnie Watts. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Is there any opposed? That motion carries. Ms. Heather, thank you so much. Uh, under the Lewis Parish Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, 11 A and C, uh, S and P Investments. This is a, for a servitude revocation for Glory Drive in District Eight. I believe that's uh, that that's yours, Dean. Okay. Um, you know anything? Have you looked at? I have not. <laughs> What's that? I need to read it. Okay. Um, because it's an introduction of an artist, we got to read by title first. This would be proposed ordinance twenty four dash oh eight, an ordinance as follows: to wit, revoking the dedication, abandoning, and quit claiming in favor of Joshua Seth Deville and Maria Fryu Deville. A 40-foot private all-purpose servitude identified by the cross-hatched portion as shown on the preliminary map showing survey and resubdivision of tracks GT-3-A, GT-3-B, GT-3-C, and GT-3-D into tracks GT-3-A-1, GT-3-B-2, GT-3-C-3, and GT-3-D-4, located in Section 24, T7S-R4E, Greensburg Land District, Livingston Parish, Louisiana, by Lester A. Macklin, Jr., Professional Land Server, Surveyor, dated November 9, 2023, and the public hearing will be on April 8th. 11th, sorry, April 11th. Well, the, 11th, the next Parish Council meeting. Yes. Mr. Coates, if you'll make the motion to uh, uh, introduce the artists, we can, you can look here. Okay, we'll make a motion. To introduce, and is there yeah. a second to introduce? Second. Second by Mr. Joe Erdy. All in favor say yes. Yes. Is there any opposed? Okay, then we'll have it back up for the next meeting. And you can, if you have any discussion. Yeah. Okay, item B, uh, a servitude revocation for River Point. You want to read this one by title, Ms. Uh, Caroline? This will be proposed ordinance 24-09, an ordinance revoking the dedication and abandoning and quick claim in favor of the landowners an unimproved right-of-way entitled River Point Drive located in Cypress Point on the Amy River situated in Section 5, T-9-S, R-4-E, G-3-4-D-4, 
GLD Livingston Parish, Louisiana, and being more particularly described herein. And the public hearing will be the next council meeting, April 11, 2024. That's in District 6. Uh, is there a motion to introduce? Motion by Mr. Mangus to introduce. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sandifer. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 That motion carried unanimous. Uh, C, Eagle's Nest RV and Boat Storage. Uh, you want to read this by title as well? This will be proposed ordinance 24-10, um, map showing revocation of existing 60-foot all-purpose servitude located on track A-2-A-1-A-1-B, dash 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 located on 36811 LA Highway 16, Denham Springs, Louisiana, located in section 42 and 45, P5S-R3E, <laughs> GLD, Livingston Parish, LA, for four-pack LLC, being more particularly described herein. <laughs> And the public hearing will be April 11th, 2020. Thanks. Mr. Ryan, this is in your district. So are you good with this? Yeah. Is that a motion? Yes. Motion to introduce by Mr. Shaver. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Mangus. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Didi, I, did you want to say something about it? Not. I was just standing up in case y'all had a question. Okay. Thank all right. You. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm just trying to run through this. Uh, <laughs> Lewis to Parish Public Works. Um, there's. Three roads, Sandy, well, she's not here. Uh, there's three roads to accept and uh, and accept the roads and improvements into the parish maintenance system. Uh, one being uh, Walker South Road, and we're at least $163,268.70 maintenance bond. We could pick these up all at one time, Robert, or we could do them. Uh, you, are you familiar with all three? You looked at yes. You good with all three of them, Robert? Good with all of them. We've out, we uh, we did address some deficiencies, so we're good with uh, all three of them. All of well, us. let's pick up all three of them at one time, unless someone has a problem with that. The next one is Middle Book Middle Brook Place first filing. That's for four hundred eighteen thousand four hundred twenty-eight dollars, and that's for that to release that maintenance bond. And the next one is South Haven, the fourth filing, for the release of one hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred nine dollar maintenance bond. Um, Balsam Drive as District Six, or in two, two of them in District Six, and one in District Four. Is there a motion? I make that motion. Motion by Mr. Shaver. Is there a second, second. by Mr. Mangus? Any discussion? All in favor, say yes. 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 That motion carries. Mr. Robert, I, I got a comment today. I wasn't going to be able to get away. <laughs> I had a constituent call me today, yes. and they went, they tripped over their self bragging on how good of a job you did. I, I got to go, Mr. John. <laughs> I just wanted to say <laughs> something. You know where I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, what's that? Uh, I second. Second that? I. Right. Thank you. Um, Item 13, a public hearing adoption of LP ordinance. We need to read this by title, Ms. Caroline. This is proposed LP ordinance 24-06, an ordinance to acquire immovable property for the Parish of Livingston pursuant to the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program Project Number FEMA-4277-DR-LA-0131 Livingston Parish. All right, we ad we introduced this at the last council meeting and tonight that will be up for uh Public hearing, so I hereby declare a public hearing. Is anyone here to speak for or against this particular ordinance? None being, I'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to adopt? Motion by Ms. Sandifer. I'll second. Second by Mr. Ryan Shaver. Is there any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 All right. Item 13 carries unanimous. Item 14, the public hearing and adoption of LP ordinance uh, for the one year moratorium. Again, uh, you need to read this one by title as well. Yes. This is LP Ordinance 24-07, an ordinance to amend the one-year moratorium prohibiting the consideration or submittals of preliminary plats or prelim prelim preliminary site plans for the residential or multifamily developments in Council District 5, creating more than three lots to allow the adoption of a comprehensive new zoning program and development of plans for infrastructure to accommodate anticipated growth. Last meeting at the council meeting, we uh, introduced this. So tonight has to be a public hearing. I hereby declare a public hearing open. Is anyone here to speak for or against this specific ordinance? None being, I'll close the public hearing. And is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Motion. Motion by Ms. Sandifer. I'll second. Second by Mr. Taylor. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Uh, that motion carried unanimous. Um, 
Item 15, adopt a resolution to add stop sign, a three-way stop sign at Whispering Springs Subdivision, Intersection Forest Manor Avenue, Fowler Drive. This is in the fabulous Mr. Lonnie Watts district. Uh, they got this, this Forest Manor and Grovemont is actually the, the three-way. Um, it's kind of a dangerous situation. What had happened is uh, they come in a lift station right there and they put a six-foot board fence around it, which is required, you know. But the lady came back out of her driveway to see. But I've been informed. Well, I tell you what, I'm calling Mr. Robert up there. He uh, he's went and looked at it, and I think oh, there's some again, discrepancies or something, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Watts asked me to go check that. That is a uh, that area is actually a long straightaway. Um, I think there were no issues previously because there was not an intersection. The newest filing that they've done there has created an intersection. There's a stop sign on the new portion. But I guess, you know, with the old filing, it, there's no way to, to slow that down. So um, I, I, I see no problem why we shouldn't you know, or couldn't do that if that's the will of the, the, the council. Um, it's definitely a, for one or two houses right there adjacent to that uh, lift station, there's no way they can see around if they're backing out of their driveway. So that, that the one of the, I guess it would be that westbound lane. Huh? Um, that would actually stop the traffic before you, right at the lift station to, to access, let somebody access out. So, is that a motion you'd like to pass? A uh, motion by Mr. Watts to uh, allow, put the three way stop sign. I'll second seconded it. by Mr. Ron Shavers. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Just to verify, we're creating, right now, there is, it is a stop on one way. We're, we're making it a three, a three way. Yes. way. So, this yes. will make it for a three. That, that's yes. what the motion was. Then. Yes. Correct? All in Thank favor you, say yes. 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 That motion carried unanimous. Thank you, Robert. Uh, item 16, adopt a resolution authorize a waiver of section 125-176 definition to allow a third address on a 12-acre 12 12 acre tract of land for Stacy Yawn. This is in Mr. Watts' district. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Uh, you want Just, to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. To, uh, give them uh, a allow the third address for the 12-acre tract. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Billy Taylor. Is there any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries unanimous. All right. Um, let's jump down to item 18 before we jump into 17, just for, for I'll, I'll explain it in a second. Board reappointments. Uh, Livingston Parish Gas District number one. Mr. Erty, you had an appointment for the gas district? No, sir. I don't, I don't even know why that's on there, but I'm gonna pull that. Cause... Oh, okay. You're not okay. They're pulling that one. Yeah, All right, just pull that one, please. All right. Thank you, Miss Hardy. Okay. Uh, item B: Livingston Parish Fire Protection District Number Five. Miss Anna. Yes, I would like to appoint Mr. Mike Reed that position. Uh, the former appointment, Mr. Tony Sibley, rolled off, and I do want to just say a thank you and a shout out to Mr. Tony for his service, and he did a fantastic job. Motion to appoint. Motion to appoint Mike Reed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Coates. Mr. Coates, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Let the parish master plan review committee. Uh, the parish president ha have an appointment to that? It's my understanding that I do. I think we sent something from Sandy and uh, Mr. Someone. Who is that? We replacing? No. Replacing somebody else. No, Mr. Gerald. Who's I believe oh. I think I know who it is. Who it was. Is it Mr. Burgess? Yes, that's who it was. Mr. Burgess is, I guess, because his health can no longer attend the meetings, and we're going to appoint Mr. Jamie Sandifer to that position. All right. Is there a motion from this council to accept the resignation of Mr. B Donald Burgess? I believe is that correct? I'm just, I'm just going to recuse. That's fine. So. Uh, and a motion to accept Mr. Uh, Sandifer. I'll make it. Motion by Mr. Shavers. Second. Second by Mr. Dean Coates. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 That motion carries. All right. Now we'll jump back to item uh, 17. Yeah. Uh, this is for an ex uh, Mr. Joe already asked this to be put on there. This is for an executive session, I believe, uh, regarding uh, tourism board. Is that correct? That's correct. Mr. Erty, did you want to talk about this or, or do you want to just go to the executive session and, and, and discuss some stuff or? Well, I do want to say one thing here, and that the way this is worded is not what I even said at all. I, I, I was 
doing a replacement. Some of, the, some of these words that are put in here, they already didn't say it. I want the public to know that. And, uh, this is simply about replacing, letting somebody go, and putting somebody else. But, but some of these things such as character, competence, physical and mental, I did not say that. I want that on public record right now. So be it. It is recorded. It will make it to the minute. Okay. Can you make sure that's in the minute? Yes. Also, um, we, what we'll do is we have another item coming up on the agenda as well that may require us to go into executive session. So what we'll do is we'll pick up both of these items in executive session instead of just one. Brad, do you see any problem with that? If we announce we're going to executive session to discuss both of these items? We didn't advertise number 19 for executive well, um, okay, all right, well then, uh, I tell you what let's do, let's go ahead and we'll go back into executive session on his in just a second, but let's, while we're, if we, you're, or you said we cannot go into executive session. You have to the agenda, but you still didn't advertise. You might want to take over. Well, if the council votes unanimously to go into executive session and lift the agenda, would that, do you think that would suffice? Mike. Is there a motion to lift the agenda to go to executive session to discuss a resolution accepting settlement, uh, settlement trace? Accelerate agreement from Don or what? Don, I'm sorry. I'll make that motion. Motion to lift the agenda yes. and go into executive session. I second. Yes. Second by Mr. Joe Erty. If there's anyone who opposes, this is to to lift the agenda. If anyone opposes to this, then it, it fails because you cannot add it to the agenda. Do y'all understand? All right. So let's call for the vote. Mr. Wascom. Yes. Mr. Mangus. Mr. Watts. Yes. Mr. Coates. Yes. Mr. Shavers. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Ms. Sandifer. Yes. Mr. Erty. Yes. Mr. Goff. And you're comfortable with our action? I want to talk about it back there. Yes. I, I do have a question. I don't, can we discuss two things in one executive session? I think yeah. we can. Well, you, I mean, technically you're supposed to advertise for it as the, the cleanest way to do it. Okay. I but, just didn't think. Do we have to come back out, take a vote, and go back in? Uh, you can't take any votes back there. Nothing can be. No, no out here. Do we have right. to come back out? Oh, you can stay back there. Okay. All right. So we had a motion to lift the agenda to add uh, executive session for item 19 as well. So um, let's go ahead and get a motion to go in, pause the meeting and go into executive session and pick up both of these items. Motion by Mr. Mangus. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Billy Taylor. All in favor say yes. Yes. Is there any opposed? That motion carries you down. We're going to take a short break, go to the back, listen to a settlement. We'll be back. Channel 17, proudly serving the Florida parishes. Okay, thank you, Robert. Is there a motion to come out of the executive section back into regular session? Mr. Make Mangus a makes a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Ricky Goff. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, just to let everyone know, we went back to the back, and we talked and talked and talked, and we took no action back there. So everything that happens will happen out here in front of the television, God, and everyone else watching. So just want to let you know, first thing we discussed was the first item in executive session was an appointment by Mr. Joe Erty uh, for tourism. Uh, appointment that we made at the last council meeting where we removed someone and replaced them with someone else. And uh, so what we're going to do now is just see if there's a pleasure for any council member to make to make any changes. I make a motion that we reinstate Mr. Parker. I second it. All right, we have a motion to reinstate Mr. Parker, second by Mr. Lonnie Watts. Is there any discussion from the audience? None being. Any discussion from the council? None being. Call for the vote, Miss Sandy. Mr. Wascom. Yes. Mr. Mangus. No. Oh. Mr. Watts. Yes. Mr. Coates. And what? What, what is the question? To reinstate Mr. Walker. No. Mr. Shavers. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Upstairs. Miss Sandifer. No. Mr. Erdy. Mr. Goff? Yes. What was the votes on that? 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> what was it? 4-4, four, four, so that motion failed. 
I'd like to just make one quick comment. Okay. The reason that this, this is very uh, questionable is that the tourism board is governed by the state, and that's why I felt, in my personal opinion, that we should reinstate that gentleman back to that board. All the other boards and committees that we deal with, uh, Gravity Drains District, uh, Parks and Recreation, things of that nature, are all directly formed and created by this parish. That one's a little bit different. It has a whole lot other pieces to it. So, but that's the wishes of council, and that's where we're going to go. All right. So that motion failed. All right. The second item we picked up in the back was uh, a discussion of the uh, as per the uh, agenda was the uh, lawsuit with uh, Donald Wade Holden and Livingston Parish uh, regarding L.A. Trace. Is there a uh, discussion or a action from this council regarding that i'll make a motion that we uh resolve to settle that i'll second that based on the attorney's recommendation so your motion is to resolve to, to settle it to settle I'll authorize the parish president that's correct to settle all right have a second by mr ricky golf is that correct Yes. All right. Ms. Sandy, you want to call for the vote? Are you going to have public discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anyone here to speak for or against settling this lawsuit with uh, Livingston Parish and Donald Wade Holden? Come on up. Give us your name and address. Thank you for the discussion. I slap forgot. Angie Bourgeois, 32327, Louisiana Highway 16. Um, so I just want to make sure that um, it's understood by everyone that the settlement that is proposed will block access to several people's property, block access to their homes, block access to their camps. There is no other access way that is available. People who have lived there since the 1990s will no longer have access to their home. You have people sitting here right now that if the settlement passes will not be able to go home. So I need you guys to really understand that passing that settlement the way it is written to go by the plat maps from 1975 or whatever year states that, that the roadway needs to be moved over into the swamp. So when the, the parish doesn't essentially say you don't have a right to pass, they say you have a right to pass. It's just according to this plat map from 1975 that says you have to go through a swamp. That is not owned by us, that we cannot mitigate, that we cannot build in, that even the parish has said before that they can't even build a road there because it would cost upwards of three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars and that was many, many years ago. So to say that we can just go and go by the swamp or build another road, any there is no other access except through wetlands that we cannot mitigate or build a road through. Um so I need you guys to really to really understand that is not for the best of this public. It's not. It's not in the best for the welfare of the public. We had a lady that came last week for the ordinance to to give you her story. She could not be here tonight, but she did ask me to 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 give that story for her. She, her father lived past us, and he's been there since I know at least the 1990s. He has four lots back there. She has inherited those four lots. She can't even get to them because of the fear of harassment that she gets every time she tries to cross back there. She can't even go back there to, to get her father's belongings. Are you listening, Mr. Mangus? That, that was really ugly. Um, <clears throat> um, excuse me? Uh, I am listening. And I, I just want to say that, that, that that's a character assassination. Um, the fear, I mean... There's been a lot of harassment and fear instilled in a lot of residents that live back there. They're here today to talk to you. They've talked to this council years ago. They've all given their testimony right here before, and it's written. Let's continue with... Uh, with you have 28 seconds left on your three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so her father, <clears throat> two years ago, passed away. Because of her fear to get through the road, and because she cannot go and he could not go to maintain the road well enough to get to his property, he was not found until he was dead for seven days, till his father could get a boat to go get him. 
I do not think limiting people's access to their property is is in the best interest of this public. Thank you, Ms. I have a question. Let's keep it open. Oh, you want to ask her a question? Yeah. Okay, go D ahead. Does any, and I, just because I'm not, I'm not from that area, but does anybody past the Holdens, do any of those residents back there use boat access only? There are some in the far back that use boat access only. Like I said, the road is only kept up to a certain point. Now, they do have a right to to keep up their road and maintain it and, and make it to where they can get back there if they choose to do so. It is maintained all the way to Mr. Lionel's because we maintain it and we've put thousands of dollars into maintaining it to make sure the people past us can have access. Anyone back there can choose to continue that access, but when they're blocked and run off, it's hard to get back there to do the necessary repairs. Uh, two, two more questions and I'm, and I'm done. Do and again, it's just because I'm not from that area, so I don't know. Do does the does is the mail delivered to any of the houses back there or on that? Mail is not delivered to me. It's a camp. My mail is delivered to my home. Okay. Um, I can tell you that a school bus last year there were children who lived back there, and the school bus did go down there and pick up those children. And they don't do that anymore. Well, the children don't live there anymore. Okay. If the children still lived there, they would pick them up. There are okay. no children back there at this point. But I do also want to just say that the Grant Bankston project, it says in, in the settlement, adopted 23,760 feet, and it subtracts the amount that is gravel. It, it adopted essentially 2,000 feet of gravel, which is what you're trying to do a quick claim on. And right under that, it says the parish never owned it. But how can you quick claim something you never owned when it gives you the measurement that they own 2,000 feet, which goes well past the Holdens, which gives us access to our property. How would emergency people get back there if it's, if it's no access? They wouldn't. People would lay there in, so in dead no, for seven no days, just like Mr. Lott did. Other, huh? No, sir. Mr. Chambers, you have no question? We do have electricity. We do have internet. We do have cable. We do have telephone lines. That That is a question that... Uh, that is a good point that I, I didn't think about emergency services. How, how has it been handled previously before this issue? They will drive all the way up until until the road is bad. I mean, as far as, you know, like they can drive at least a half a mile past the Holdens to get to several properties back there. The Holdens lots are number 53. The lots go to number 80 something. Um, so essentially, you're blocking access to, to all of that. Some of the road is in disrepair and needs to be repaired. <clears throat> Whether they repair it or not, you know, is, is I so, guess, up so to, the, to them because it's not parish maintained at a certain point. So emergency services don't go back there? They do. if They, they can go back there as far as they can. But if you, if you give this settlement, they will not be able to go back there. If you approve this settlement, they will have no access back there. Man. Uh, does anywhere in the settlement does it say that anybody will be denied access? It says that we have that. to use the plat map from 1975, which means we have to go through the swamp. So it doesn't say it in the exact verbiage, <laughs> but it, 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 it references that we, we have to go through the area that the plat map says, which now is, is, is swamp because they've lost, they've lost property on the riverside, and they essentially want to move the road over to what the the measurement used to be the settlement doesn't say the settlement says that it is not it will not be a public road and it will not be part of the parish maintenance system not and be that, public and that the parish uh agrees not interfere with the landowner's peaceful possession of their private property and to accept the survey from as per that and survey to accept the survey from 19 uh, July 1st 1975 which will block our access I'd like to make a comment Mr. Goff the um the road was taken in by Mr. Grant's Bankston's yes, mechanism sir. so I'm gonna try to my best to explain this and wrap my head around it as I understand the Holdens have an agreement with a resident up north and I would hope that they would extend that agreement the people pass to allow residential passes but what we are doing here today and correct me if i'm wrong we are recognizing that plat that was grant bankston also recognizes the road and the plat 
that you're referring to for the 80-something lots shows an access of right-of-way, but it is in the swamp. Correct. This road has been in place. I'm going to call it a, a goat trail for a long time and has had access in and out back through there. Right. The issue becomes a civil matter for you, the people behind it, to go to court and prove that that access has been used a sufficient amount of time that you should continue to use it because this parish is never going to do anything with the actual road right away. So what we're not trying to block anything. The Holdens will block it. It's a civil matter, and we don't own that road that's there if you look at the plat map. But, but we have I, new surveys that say the road is where it's supposed to be. So why would we recognize the, the survey the, from the 75? And the court still has not gotten that same surveyor to put his name on the dotted line to say your survey is correct or their survey is correct. So this parish needs to get out of the middle of y'all's situation. From the road aspect in the swamp and the access, I hope that the Holdings do not deny access both medical or just general <coughs> driving for y'all as residents and as neighbors back there but i think personally so the hold, on, map. hold on i think personally that you have a case to state that and mr holden sent a picture with his son right in the middle of the goat path that this road has been there so long and has been used on a regular but it doesn't matter who maintains it and it doesn't matter who built it it has been allowed to have access before y'all got there, before the Holdings purchased, et cetera. And that's your case, ma'am. But it has nothing to do with the parish. So if, does everyone in that phase get to claim their 100 feet as well? You mean the right away of the Correct. The swamp? There, are, there are many lots that are on that road that do not have the 100 feet in that, from that survey that we're referring to. So do they also get to claim the road? Whatever that settlement is in my world it should follow all the way down through there in the gravel section but the settlement only dictates their lots specifically so if those individuals feel that they want that particular piece back then they need to go to the parish president's office and request that we revoke those or or give that property back to the property owner so we move the whole road so that everybody has the same amount of property since it the 1970s it has nothing to do where the road shows it is now. They never will be a road because there's no base there. We'd be wasting money, and this council is not here to waste money. I promise you but that. But the, the map shows there is a road and there is a servitude, so why can't we go by that and understand that erosion has taken I'm place? I'm going to say this one more time, and then I'm done. <clears throat> you, nor Mr. Holden, can tell this council because you can't tell the judge that that road is or is not the actual road that you drive on. You can't say it because the surveyor that she hired said, go figure it out. These people don't know what they're talking about, apparently. And he says, he ain't dealing with it. So we are basically stating that you, in my opinion, I'm just giving some yes, non-legal advice because I'm not an attorney, but I do believe that you have an, a legal right to access your property if you do not have if your property doesn't say deeded, water access only, right. then that goat trail has been there for a long time. Road that's been maintained by the parish for a long time. It's been there a long time. Yes, sir. And we can't, because there's a dispute, <laughs> we can't tell you if it's our road or not. You say, but it has been maintained. Okay, that's a whole other ball of wax. Mr. Coffey, you done? It, I, I'm done. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Uh, is there anyone else up here that had a question? Uh, uh, Ms. Bourgeois, we have someone behind you who wants to speak. And uh, come up, give us your name and address. And For one thing, uh, the telephone poles have been in the same place since the 70s. And uh, since I was back there in the early 90s. Give us your name and address. Lionel Gearan, okay. 20638 Louisiana Trace Road. Since 1994 to today, that's been my primary residence. 
I got a FEMA trailer back there because I flooded. I got flood insurance. I got a hard phone line running from the front, from the blacktop, all the way back to the end of that property. And it's been there since the 70s for E-Tail. That was always, the roads always been in the same place. I used to go there when I got out of high school in the 70s. We always drove in the same place. Their telephone poles have been there since the 70s. This ain't just like they just all of a sudden put telephone poles in there for the holdings. They've <coughs> always been there. And uh, I'd like to read this right here, uh, what I wrote up. Uh, Gus Holden started off in a 25-foot travel trailer. Gus Holden, me, and 10 landowners went to the old courthouse, to the committee, I mean, to the council meeting, until it was approved. Gus Holden went to every, every council meeting. And then they came out with dump truck, equipment, employees, and fixed the road from the blacktop to the cover. They put a sign up there, in the Pirates Maintenance. That's before the Holden built anything or whatever they did since then. <coughs> Uh, we went, uh, the Holden stayed, Gus Holden stayed in that travel trailer for years and years after the road was already being maintained. Then he built his house. They knew where the, uh, all right, let me read this again. After the road was maintained before he started his house, there was a road was in the same place. They knew where the road was before they built their houses. Now they're suing the parish, saying y'all stole their land. And now they're trying to take away everybody else's that owns land all the way to the end of Louisiana Trace, trying to take away their right. I've been there since 19... I started off in the 70s camping on that property. <clears throat> I signed the papers in 1994. That's been my primary residence. I got a hard line and run past my property. It's always been there, all the way to Bayou King George. That's always been a road right there. They keep saying it ain't a road, it should be in the swamp. The telephone poles are there, it's been there forever. I got a FEMA trailer they issued me because that's my primary residence. I got flood insurance, and I live there now. So all this coming up, Gus Holden went with us to the courthouse until they adopted it and approved it and came out with the truck, dump truck, the people, the fabric, everything, culverts. And fixed the road. He stayed in his camper for years. He knew where the road was, just like Wade did. Built the houses. Now they wasn't satisfied with it because they don't have no room. They cut down one tree. They charged them twenty thousand dollars. One tree. They got it reduced. That go. That, so it started when that when that happened. That's when it started. Then they started. The parish coming in, fix the road. Nobody had a problem with the road. The Holdens the only one had a problem with the road. Once they built the houses, they started putting limestone in there. And when the parish come out there and try to work on the road, they told them they, they made them leave. They, they fixed the road up to their property. And from the, where their property goes to the culvert, it dropped down two foot. 2021, the parish came out there and put a whole lot of material from the holding place to the culvert. And it's a good road right now. The holding knew the road was there before they built their property, their houses. Now they're saying, Y'all stole their property, and they got a lawsuit against y'all. I've been there a long time, way before they even exist. It started off in a camper. They went to the courthouse until it was approved. And then they built the houses years later. They drove on the same road for years and years. Why didn't they say something about it then? Telephone poles hadn't moved. That's a wet swamp. You got telephone poles running all the way past me to King George. And it's a hard line running all the way there, and it's still there today. I had fiber running on my property because when they done away with the hard line, they had to grandfather me in to put my fiber. Now, they want to take all my rights away and cut me off from being able to go to my property. I stayed for a whole year without <laughs> being able to access my property. I went to civil court. I got an injunction to go to my property. The very next day, they put up a gate. The next day, they put up a gate in front of their property. So it was a year before I could even access my property. The parish came out, and they had to take the gate with them so they wouldn't quit where we could go to our property. Everything was settled two and a half years ago. Now you got all new council members, and it's starting all over again. So that's the part I don't understand. It was settled. Can't block the road. 
Y'all voted on it in the council. We won. Here we go again. Is there any questions from the council for Mr. K. Rand? I mean, I just, you know, not trying to get all excited, but that's what happened. Thank you, Mr. K. Rand. All right. Is there anyone else? Come on up. Go ahead. Come on up. Randall Edward Alvin, 35893 Wise Road, Barker, Louisiana. Been on that property in 74. You know, first thing, would you define settlement for me? Got a settlement, evidently. Define the settlement, please, sir. I think the attorney read it a while ago, I believe, of what it was. You want to know the terms of the settlement? I want the terms of the settlement. Let me pull it up. All right, so this settlement was was drafted between uh, Mr. Moody and Mr. Stephen Loeb have gone back and forth on this. And it says, parties agree and stipulate and enter into a consent judgment agreeing in the validity of the survey plat of Alex J. Terrier, land surveyor, dated July 1st, 1975, entry number 11032 of the official Louisiana uh, Livingston Parish conveyance records filed October 26, 1975 shows the true representation of the plaintiff's properties and the location of a dedicated right-of-way. B, the road or right-of-way as shown on the map, although dedicated to the public, was never formally accepted by the parish of Livingston. C, there is no evidence of continuous regular maintenance of the road done by the parish of Livingston for three consecutive years. D, the road shown on the survey noted above is not considered a parish road and will not be part of the parish maintenance system. E, in exchange for the consideration and promises by the plaintiffs, Livingston Parish, through its council, <laughs> agrees to pass a resolution within 30 days of the execution of this agreement to remove the relevant portions of the road from the parish maintenance system. F, the parish shall be enjoined by the consent judgment from any behavior or action that threatens, harasses, or intimidates the plaintiff's peaceful possession and use of their private property. And G, the parties agree to pay their own court. Now you know what's in the settlement. Okay, so in other words, the settlement is y'all don't have a lawsuit against them regardless what it does to your citizens. Is that, just, is that what I understand? Did it say that? That's what I'm asking. Does it say? Well, the last what, time you... Are they protected? The last time you addressed this council, you basically told us we were going to hell if we voted against the way. So... Uh, <clears throat> This is a public hearing, but you're not going to make us say what you want. I'm not it, trying to make uh, you say anything, sir. So ask your question right. and okay. get an answer. But this is this is going on too much. Okay. I'm Next tired. Time. It's late. So so with the, hold on one second. If you have something to say, go ahead and say it. Well, I am. It's, with it, the verbal semantics and say what, what you need to say. John, two that, two councils, okay. The last one in this council. Now, the second thing, you still say, you said last time, that this council could not overrule a court of law. Have y'all consulted with the, with the uh, judge? Well, the judge? The judge doesn't have any say-so necessarily in the settlement itself. Um, the issue that came up last time was there was a court-appointed uh, surveyor that was hired, appointed by the court to go out there and survey to determine, okay, whose survey is right? Is the right of way located here or is it located here? Um, that surveyor had a lot of time to try to figure it out in discussions with him. He said, unless he has the original points done in 1975 that he can go out there and actually map it out, he doesn't, he doesn't think anybody can accurately <laughs> survey that room. So told. to answer your question, no, he hasn't spoken. We haven't consorted with the judge. Well, I would, I would consult the judge if I was one of the counsel. Thank you all very much for your time. And if this people get uh, bribed, you know, come out more, you know, or go in, try to go in tonight, there's a load of dirt in that, in that road. That's terrible. Thank you all. All right. Uh, is there anyone else here? Come on up. Give us your name and address. <clears throat> I try to be quick. Uh, my name is Luke Snyder, 23157 Christmas Drive, Denham Springs, Louisiana. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to kind of vocalize uh, the possible challenges that it poses to my family. Uh, obviously, you guys have heard there's been actions in the past that raise these concerns. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that this 
will uh the challenges that uh this will cause my family is uh to not have travel by land with forces to travel by boat either safe or practical in my opinion uh and we've you know brought up the topic of emergency situations um i haven't had the opportunity to uh, meet the holden family personally but uh like i said the actions in the past uh have, have just raised concerns from uh what i've heard through the community uh, i just hope to seek a resolution that honors uh you know fair road access overall and uh i hope that i hope to express my concerns uh, i appreciate it. thank you sir is there anyone else here to speak for or against Mr. Garan, you still have that judgment in place. Yes. yes. Come up and give us your name and address. Well, I'm saying like, like this doesn't affect that. <clears throat> no, sir. Gary Talbert, 35002 Ben Road. I was part of the council two and a half years ago. We resolved this. We had DPW go out and look at the road. We had DPW inspect it. Your parish road engineer, person y'all have under contract now that handles roads, surveyed that road and said it's in the right spot. We, we spent money as a parish on that road in 2021. That road should remain access, should remain public access to all those individuals. That road was part of Grant Bankston. So because of what, because it was on the Grant Bankston list, the measurement was there. Some of the statements in the settlement agreement are not even truthful. You're acknowledging things that aren't truthful in the settlement agreement. Read, read, I mean, if you read it, you, you say it was never accepted in the parish. That's not true. It was, it, if it wasn't accepted previously, it was accepted in 2021 by the previous council. So you have a legal leg to stand on. What you're doing is in the, in, in the benefit of one political contributor to different people are going to penalize everybody that lives past it. That's it in a nutshell. So, so I don't understand how the same council that says the previous council stole somebody's land and we're going to give it back to them is the same council that <laughs> denies people from developing the land that they own that doesn't impact anybody that lives past. Doesn't deny them access to their property. Let, if, let's at least be consistent in our actions as a governmental body. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak? Mr. Gabriel, I've already let you talk. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's see if there's anybody else has anything to say. Is there anything else to be said? We have a motion by Mr. Coates. I think a second still by Mr. Goff to, to authorize the parish president to enter in the settlement. Uh, nobody else? Mr. Gabriel, you had a question you want to ask? Go ahead before we shut it down. Say my injunction still, Mr. Gary. I, I I can't give you legal advice. Yeah. Um. But just generally speaking, a settlement of this lawsuit doesn't affect any other docket number out. Okay. It well, just settles I, I this docket number. Okay. Well, I appreciate yes, it. All right. So no more discussion, I guess, from the audience. So council members, we had a motion and a second. With nothing else to do, y'all want to call for the vote, or do you have a question? I just have. Go ahead, Dean. No, go ahead. <laughs> Robert, I hate to put you on the spot. Do you know if this is a parish maintenance or not? I'm about to answer that question. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. In 1996, according to the Grant Bankston book, and I looked at it today, L.A. Trace is not in that book. It's not in it. So uh, take that into consideration. In approximately 2007, the parish paved 2000. 225 linear feet of the road, all right? That is only the blacktop area. Uh, this has been verified verbally. Various footages have been, uh, <clears throat> various footages have been stated but have not been able to be verified, meaning that there are a lot of people that claim it's 2,700 feet. Some people who claim it's 20, uh, 2,000, 20,000 feet, sorry. And uh, there's, there's, there's different variations of that because the tools being used at that time were not as accurate as they are today. So there's a lot of discrepancy there. However, March 31st, 2014, Sam DiGeronimo issued a letter, which I have right here, that clearly states that, uh, 
that the road only went so far and it went 500 feet from the property belonging to Dolly Delanio, which brings you to the culvert, correct? So even the properties where y'all are at is not in this equation. Uh, the, the, I say the culvert. I don't, I don't know whether exactly if, if it's culvert or not. I know when I looked it up and did the numbers, that property came out to right past the Holden's property, which is where they stopped what they were doing. Um, another thing that was said was that in 2021, this was just passed. That did not pass because I have the uh, 20, 21-06 ordinance right here, and it did not pass. It failed 7-2. to two. So that's, that's why we're here, and that's why we're trying to do the right thing. So in 2021, it failed to be into the maintenance system. Yes, it, it has never been accepted into the maintenance system. <clears throat> All right, so, Mr. Coates, and is there any more discussion from this side? I hadn't let, any, I hadn't let anybody else talk twice except Mr. Gayram. Uh, L.A. Trace is on page 20 of the Grant Mason list. Gary, I, 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 is there any more? more Ricky, thing, you, you, we need to call for the uh, I'm fixing the call for the vote. Order or whatever we need to do. Call the question. Right, banks are not um, maintenance or not. The plat was taken in, so there's a servitude of access on everyone's plat from start to end, whether it's a parish or not. In their case, has to be settled in a civil matter. This parish cannot continue to battle this over and over. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call for the vote. Before I do, I'm gonna say something real quick. And I'm going to stop here after this. <clears throat> As the chairman, I guess I get the last one. <clears throat> right now, in Livingston Parish, if you own 15 acres and you want to subdivide your land, we will not let you subdivide your land unless you give a right-of-way access to the, to the other property that you're subdividing. You just can't do it. We've had people ask for waivers, and we don't do it. And we give, right? We, we don't let you subdivide until, unless we give that. 40 or 60 foot servitude or, or uh, right of way. When this land was subdivided at some point before we got here, there was access back there. And hopefully whoever was in charge did not let them subdivide without a known way to get back to their property. So, you know, whether it's one foot, two feet off of a road or something, according like Mr. Coates said, maybe the surveying equipment wasn't as great back then. But just to deny someone access to their property by road, you know, to me is, is landlocking. And, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's something that I, I, I just think that, you know, you could say, well, there's always boat. Well, as far as that goes, there's always helicopter access. So I think automobile and car access is, is what it means when it says landlocking. So with that being said, uh, Ms. Sandy, you want to call for the vote? Mr. Wascom? No. Do you want to clarify what this yeah, is Yeah, the vote is to accept the settlement. The answer is no. Mr. Wascom, no. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? No. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Abstain. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. All right, that motion, I believe, carried, correct? All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is committee reports, finance committee. I think y'all ha didn't have any, correct? No, we did not have uh, meeting for the finance committee. <clears throat> uh, Hardness committee, Mr. Cut Dean, did you have any? Yes, we, we did, but we just uh, deferred those items uh, to the next meetings because they need some work. Last thing was district attorney report, Mr. Cascio. Nothing tonight, sir. I would like to say I hope L.A. Trace doesn't make back to the agenda for a long, long time so we don't have to get stuck here quite this late anymore. And I, I, I commit to you to try to keep these meetings going and just if I can keep these, these type of things off the agenda, we can make it quicker. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make that motion. It's a motion by Mr. Taylor, second by Ms. Sanford. All in favor say yes. Yes. I declare this meeting adjourned.